Hey Accent users, this tutorial will show you how to set up and use HTC Vive integration with MVM. This tutorial will be using Vive 3.0 trackers and 2.0 base stations. Although 1.0 Vive hardware can work, it is recommended to use 2.0 and above for this integration. A head mounted display, or HMD for short, and controllers are optional. First, we need to install Steam VR from Steam. If not already on your computer, install Steam from their online store. Open Steam, go to the store, and search for Steam VR. Then go through the installation process. It is important to not use beta versions of Steam VR. To check this, go to your library, right click on Steam VR, open properties, go to the betas tab, and then set this to none. Next, open MVN and go to options Steam VR. If you are not using HMD, enable use Steam VR without HMD. It is recommended to enable Make Steam VR UI less intrusive, prevent tracker shutdown, and lock LighthouseDB.json while recording. If you are using an HMD and you want control of the origin in MVN, enable Use Origin from Steam VR, then go ahead and save and close. We can now move on to setting up the Vive hardware. Documentation on how to properly set up your base station play area can be found on Vive's support page. In general, the base station should be placed above the talent and angled down at about a 30 degree angle. The number of base stations will determine your play area's size, as you can see in this chart here. Plug each base station into a power outlet and wait for the status light to turn bright green. If possible, block any sunlight from your play area as this can cause interference in Vibes tracking. Plug the tracker dongle into the cradle Connect the cradle to your computer via the micro USB cable. Then turn the tracker on by holding the button in the middle until the light turns on, and then wait for it to change to bright green. With everything hooked up, leave all trackers in the middle of your play area so that they are visible by every base station. If it is not already running, go ahead and start up SteamVR. Your hardware should appear in this window as a lit up icon. Open the menu by clicking here and choose Room Setup. Choose Standing Only. Hit Next. Calibrate Center. Wait for that to finish. Next. Calibrate Floor. Next. And then Done. We're finished setting up Steam VR and can now move on to MVM. Open the Motion Capture Configuration window. To enable position aiding, go to the Position tab and change 3D Position Aiding to HTC Vive. Your available Vive devices will appear here. Find your desired tracker and assign the body location at which you would like to attach the tracker. All possible locations will give the same quality Position Aiding data, but it is important to make sure that the tracker is visible to as many base stations as possible during the talent's movement. On the pelvis, the Vive tracker should be just above the Exxon's pelvis tracker. On the forearm, the tracker should be halfway from wrist to elbow on the outer side of the arm when standing in head pose. On the lower leg, the tracker should be placed a third of the way up from the ankle on the outer side of the leg in head pose. At this point, you can finish setting up a live session as normal and move on to calibration. To enable Vive object tracking in MVM, find the Objects tab in the left of the Motion Capture Configuration window. Enable objects by switching this on. Your active Vive devices will appear here and can be enabled in MVM by checking on their respective boxes. The devices can be renamed by double clicking here. Vive data smoothing can be enabled but may introduce delays in output. If you have position aiding enabled for a device, that will appear in other users. With object tracking enabled, the Vive devices will now be visible in the viewport. If they appear to be floating above or below the floor plane in MVN, have the talent place any one of the Vive devices on the ground. Then in MVN, go to Tasks and Reset Floor. If you are only using the one tracker attached to the talent, you may unscrew the tracker, reset the floor, and then replace it. If your MVN version is older than 2020.2, you will need to manually reset the floor height. Instructions for this can be found in our knowledge base documentation. To calibrate with Vive position aiding, begin in the end pose near the edge of your play area. During the walking portion, take normal strides while staying within the play area. If necessary, you may walk in a circle to ensure you do not leave the play area and you give the system sufficient movement data. 
After calibration, it is important to move and walk around to properly align MBN to the orientation of the Vive trackers. If the avatar does not adjust itself after some time, have the talent hold the end pose, then go to Tasks and choose Axis Reset. Walk around again until the avatar properly aligns itself. If the avatar appears far from the tracker, in the same Tasks menu, use Move Character to Origin to snap the avatar to the tracker. At this point, we are ready to record. MVN will record both the avatar's movements and the movements of any active vibe objects. After recording, an MVN file will be created for your actor. If object tracking was used, an MVNO file will also be created for your objects, and an MVNS file will be created to open both the MVN and MVNO files in one session. The MVN file can be HD reprocessed using HDC Vive data. For this, it is recommended to check on Reinitialize Mocap Engine. When exporting from the MVNS file, the software will export a file for your actor and a file for your objects. For live streaming with position aiding, open the network streamer settings, add a stream if there's not one already there, and check this box to activate it. To live stream objects, make sure to check on send object data. We are now ready to stream to third party software. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Thank you for watching.